Today is November 2nd and here in Mexico it is the final day of Dia de Muertos or Day of the Dead celebrations. Even though I've lived in Mexico for three years, this year is my first time preparing a Dia de Muertos altar and I'm headed to Mercado La Cruz in Querétaro city center right now to pick up a few last minute items. I thought I'd bring you along. For honest insight and practical advice about living in Mexico, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload a new episode every Thursday. Each year, Dia de Muertos takes place on November 1st and 2nd. While it's largely inspired by pre-Hispanic cultures, Catholicism's All Saints Day and All Souls Day have also influenced the celebrations. The Aztec, Toltec, and other pre-Hispanic cultures understood that death was a natural phase in life's long continuum, and for that reason, they elected to celebrate, as opposed to mourn, the dead. Today, in Mexico and other parts of Latin America, family and friends gather each year in early November to do the same. The last thing on my to-do list before I head back to the house is to pick up a Negro Modelo. So part of my errands today were to buy the comida favorita, the bebidas favoritas of my loved ones who I am paying tribute to with my altar. And my grandpa loved Negro Modelo, so gotta have one. I am home from the market now and I'm getting ready to put the finishing touches on my altar. As you can see, it is right there behind me. I've got it in my dining room set up on a desk. And I've had it there set up for about a week and a half now, I think. And as much as I have loved seeing it, I think I might have put it up a little too early because some of the flowers, they're, they're not doing too hot. So you live and you learn. The flower section at Mercado La Cruz was almost entirely sold out of Flores de Sempasuchil, which are the orange marigolds, which are pretty much the flower for Dia de Muertos. Fortunately, I managed to snag this bouquet here, which also has some baby's breath and some cresta de gallo. Um, those are also important flowers for Dia de Muertos and I am going to now kind of, like I said, put the finishing touches on my altar and I will share with you some of the main components. Due to the pandemic, Dia de los Muertos celebrations were much smaller in Mexico this year. City officials across the country made the decision to cancel parades and public altars, as well as close cemeteries. But virus or not, the souls would still be temporarily returning to earth, which meant home altars, or ofrendas, were more important than ever. These altars aren't for worshiping, but rather they serve to welcome souls back to the realm of the living and provide sustenance after what is, as I'm sure you can imagine, a very long journey. If like me, you have lost someone important in your life, then you know that not everyone feels comfortable talking about someone who isn't around anymore. Especially in the United States, people have a very closed off view, a very uncomfortable attitude about death. Dia de Muertos is a time to, to remember those people and to be happy because even though they are gone now, you were fortunate enough to, to have them in your life for a time. Now, something that I really love about Dia de Muertos is the fact that there are no hard and fast rules for your altar. You can really make it uh, however you want it to be. The Aztec or the Mexica, where this Dia de Muertos tradition originated, believed that the Flor de Sempasuchil, which has a very distinct, very strong smell, that smell would help lead the souls from the afterlife, um, from the land of the dead, Mitla, to the land of the living. So on a lot of altars, you will see obviously flowers in their full form, and then also petals. 
these sugar skulls were meant to be a replacement for actual skulls, which the Aztecs would put on their altars. And when the Spanish came to the Americas, they, well, they had something to say about that, like they had something to say about everything, and convinced the, the Aztecs to start making their offerings out of sugar. I learned so much about the origins of sugar skulls from the Learn Spanish and Go podcast. If you are looking for a little bit of Spanish listening comprehension, then definitely check out Jim and Mai's podcast. I will leave a link in the description below. Pan de muerto or bread of the dead. I've never said that in English. It sounds kind of funny. But pan de muerto is a very traditional pastry for this time of year. And I managed to snag the very last one from a bakery near my house. And it's a little hard to tell on this piece, but usually uh, you can see this like extra piece of, of bread here. It's usually in a crossbone. So like two bones crossing pirate style. The bread kind of has a little bit of an orangey flavor and obviously a ton of sugar. People will often use papel picado to decorate their altars and it represents the element of air. When the paper moves, a soul is believed to have passed by the altar. As night starts to set in, it's time for the candles. They represent light, faith, and hope. They will guide souls on their return journey to the land of the living. Taylor and I are about to eat dinner and watch Coco, but before we do, I need to place the last element on my altar. I have some chorizo for my grandpa and a hot dog with tons of ketchup for my dad. There it is, my altar, my ofrenda for Dia de Muertos is complete. And I am so glad that I decided to share this with you. And I hope you enjoyed hearing about my Dia de Muertos experience. This has been one of the most beautiful experiences I have had since moving to Mexico to date. I really cannot underscore how special and how meaningful this has been for me. If you have any questions about Dia de Muertos or about living in Mexico in general, then leave those in the comments below and I will definitely get back to them. I'm Alex from BackpackingBrunette.com. Thanks for watching.